So, what did you think of that opening sequence? I happen to think it's rather nifty. Believe it or not, it's just a screen capture of a dynamic component created in SketchUp Pro 7. You're actually looking at that model right now. If I grab the Interact tool, and I just need to find it. Ah, there it is. Once the magic finger lights up, I know I'm on top of it. I'll click to Interact. And here you can see that it's just an ordinary dynamic component. If I interact with it again, the animations just happen in reverse. And if I switch to a front view, the model effectively becomes hidden. It's at this point that the screen capture starts. This tutorial is going to be a two-part series. In the first, with the help of the component attributes dialog, I'll give you an overview of how this dynamic component works. In the second, I'll actually walk you through the steps to create it. As with the other Concept 3D video training series, I recommend watching this video in high definition. With the component selected and my component attribute dialog open, we can get started. When this component is interacted with, the onclick attribute is calling two behaviors, go to scene and animate custom. The go to scene behavior is telling this model to transition to the angle view scene, take three seconds to do it, and its ease in and ease out values are both set to 50. The animate custom behavior is animating the anim1 attribute, which is right here. It's animating over three seconds. Its ease in and ease out values are also both 50. And the values it's animating between are 0 and 100. To explain the formulas, I'm going to turn on my formula view mode by clicking this icon right here. As anim1 is being animated from 0 to 100, it's being referenced inside this anim2 attribute right here. It's being divided by 100, and then that value is multiplied by 270. So on each interact, anim2 is transitioning between 0 and 270. Now you might be wondering why I didn't just animate the anim2 attribute directly with this onclick. It's nice to have one animated value that you can think of as a percentage that can be used as a multiplier, just in case you want to use it in multiple attributes. Pay close attention to this component as I interact with it. Did you notice that there are three distinct animations in sequence? And each one of those animations included parts that rotated 90 degrees in one direction or another. It's no coincidence that this 270 that the anim2 attribute is animating to is the sum of those rotations. You'll see these R pass attributes in the parent and in the children components. It's those formulas that are giving this component the illusion of a three animation sequence. As the anim2 value is between 0 and 90, the first sequence is happening. As it's between 90 and 180, this second sequence happens. And the final sequence happens as the value is between 180 and 270. This component has two direct children components, RB, which is the bottom piece, and RT, which is the top piece. These parent R pass attributes are what get those components to rotate into position. This is the RB, and this is the RT. Each of those components also have an R pass attribute value that gets passed to their children, which you can't see at this level of editing. The RB component has one child that animates into this position. The RT component has two children, 
one that animates into this position, and the final one that animates up into that position. If you double click on this component to edit it, and then select the children component independently, you can see their parent-child relationship. To better explain those RPAS formulas, I'm going to make a copy of this and then explode it down to what I guess would be the grandchildren component. And then I'll move those away from one another. I'm also going to turn on the component axes view option from the window menu option and then model info under the component side option, I'll click this mark here. From this position, all of these parts are on the same plane. Additionally from this position, some of the parts are hidden, such as the RB component. That's done with this formula, which basically says if the rotation is zero, hide this component. And that's done to avoid that surface flickering that's commonly known as Z-fighting. However, as soon as it starts to rotate, it becomes unhidden. Let's return to the anim2 attribute value. That's the value that really drives this animation. With each interact, that value ranges between 0 and 270. With that in mind, let's look at the rpass1 formula. That's the value that drives the RT component animation. It uses the smallest function, which will return the smallest value of any given values, and our options are 90 or anim2. So as anim2 is equal to between 0 and 90, that's the result of that function. As soon as anim2 goes beyond, 90 becomes the smallest value of those two options. So that's how that RT piece rotates 90 degrees and then stops. The RB component uses the same function except it has a minus, making it negative. For the next animation in the sequence, Let's look at the rpass attribute here that gets referenced down to this component's rotation around its green axes. Once again, we see the smallest function. The options inside of that function are 90 or the result of this nested function, which is the largest value between 0 and this referenced anim value, which is cube exclamation mark anim2 minus 90. As the anim2 value is between 0 and 90, this formula returns a value of 0. As the anim2 value goes from 90 to 180, this formula then returns values between 0 and 90. And that's where the animation happens. Finally, as the anim2 value continues to 270, this value remains 90. Because at this point, the result of this largest function is going to be greater than 90, which is inside of the smallest function. So in review, as anim2 goes from 0 to 90, the RT and RB components rotate into position. As anim2 goes from 90 to 180, the children component of both of these components rotate into position. And that leaves one final component, this top one. Its formula 
is right here. The value is going to be the largest of either 0 or the anum2 value minus 180. So until the anum2 value hits 180, this is going to equal 0. As the anum2 goes from 180 to 270, this equals the values between 0 and 90, which accounts for the last 90 degree rotation. I hope this has given you a good idea of how this dynamic component works. Be sure to check out part two of this tutorial and I'll show you how it can be built.